So this talk isn't about testing a cloud itself, like compliance testing or checking functionality of a running cloud. This talk is about testing the cloud. And what I mean by that is testing cluster software that can't run in containers. It requires either a bare metal machine or a full, full virtual machine, so something that looks like real hardware. And in fact, we need more than one of them. So we can't run it on a single VM inside a cloud. Furthermore, we require full access to the network, which means using a number of virtual machines inside a cloud is going to be problematic at best. So the software I'm talking about is OpenStack on OpenStack, or simply triple O. And our goal with this project is to deploy OpenStack, making use of OpenStack itself wherever possible. So this means to deploy a cloud, we need a cloud. Uh, we also want to scale out to a ridiculous number of machines. And rather than using configuration management software to try and keep the machines up to date, we're making use of golden images, which means that we will roll out a new image for upgrades and for package changes. Usually don't need to do that for configuration changes. We've got other things that are out of band to deal with that. So some of the constraints for testing this that we have to fit in are the ones I've already stated, like that it has to be a bare metal or a virtual machine and with full access. But we also have around 50 developers working full time on this with a large number of patch sets running. And if we don't have a CI system that can scale out to handle this, we can either end up blocking someone or everything because we can't land a fix. So the CI system we've built hooks into OpenStack's CI infrastructure, which is actually a very interesting topic all by itself. But I'm only going to touch on it very briefly, because like bacon and eggs for breakfast, the chicken is involved and the pig is committed. And in this case, the OpenStack CI system itself is the chicken. So the diagram shows all the pieces of the OpenStack CI system. A contributor pushes a patch up. Up, or updates an existing patch. And we go from Garrett to Zool. Zool does queuing, makes sure that patches that rely on patches before it are queued in such a way that you don't have something that's going to be waiting for something because it's in front of it. Uh, so each patch will result in a number of jobs being created for each test one. It's maybe up to 20, but we're currently maxing out at about five for triple O. And we've got plans soon to double that to cover more cases like HA and things like that. So Zool then talks to Gearman, talks to Jenkins to assign a slave to run the tests. At this point, we diverge, as in Triple O does. Since the slave we create is on a cloud that the Triple O project runs, rather than the Rackspace or the HP public clouds that the CI system OpenStack uses runs. So since we have five jobs, I'm not going to go through all of them, but they pretty much have a common baseline. Um, the job then uses that machine to run our disk image building software. So we create fresh images for each test run. This has some problems. There's a, uh, there's a concern that doing this is, is, is quite slow, but this is pretty much solved by caching and local mirrors. Uh, as another issue, Ubuntu uses Upstart, and Fedora uses System D at the moment. Uh, this means we have some rather horrible case statements in our code about that, that, that assume that Ubuntu is Upstart, which is probably going to involve large amounts of hair tearing when Ubuntu moves to System D, or when stuff changes with that regard in terms of it might be a bit of both. Uh, just as a note, we, can, we support more than just Ubuntu and Fedora. We support Debian, RHEL, OpenSUSE, but at the moment they're not currently tested in CI. Test environments with my terrible, terrible diagram done in Inkscape. Um, this sleeve then opens a connection to a Gearman that we run. This is per one of our clouds and is completely separate to the Gearman that OpenStack CI runs and gets handed details about a test environment, like one of these things. The control plane is 
a virtual bridge running on a test environment machine. And so you have a number of seed VMs talk to that control plane so that they can talk out to the cloud and other parts of the network. And the other VMs must communicate via that seed. And so this also means that each test environment can't talk to each other, but they can talk to, for example, the, the cloud, the CI cloud. Then they don't really tend to influence each other except by causing load on the hypervisors. So once we have the details of the test environment, we can start to build out our cluster. This is actually quite a pretty diagram, and I quite like it. It's pretty close, except the terminology we're using has moved on from under cloud to over cloud, which gives the perception of nested virtualization, which is false. So this contains a seed, which, we use, which, which has a minimal OpenStack installation on it. And the idea being that you can bring the seed in on a laptop or a virtual machine, something like that, point it at the hardware and tell it to go. With IPMI credentials for a bunch of machines, we can at the moment go out and deploy onto up to, I think, 80 machines successfully. And in interest of eating our own dog food, we use our own scripts to build out our own CI cloud. So we're using our own stuff when we're running CI as well. So using the services on the seed, we build out a deploy cloud. Uh, what it's showing up here is an undercloud. And so once the deploy cloud is up and running, the seed can, in fact, go away. But we can't do that since we'd rather like to be able to talk to the VMs over the network. <laughs> uh, so the deploy cloud is a complete OpenStack install. It contains things like Horizon, the web interface, um, and is fully expected to be built in HA fashion. Why can't I scroll? Uh, and then we'll use the deploy cloud to build out a workload cloud, which is shown up here as an overcloud. You can see here that this shows that the overcloud is using more hardware than the, than the undercloud, and that is to be completely expected. In a, in a usual sort of deployment for this, you'd only want to give three machines to the, to the deploy cloud since it doesn't run virtualization, and you're really going to get, only going to be using it to run, to, to build up another, another workload cloud. And so that one is also pretty much required to be running in a HA fashion. And it's what you point people at to say, here's our cloud. So once we have all that running, if we could test the workload, we test the workload cloud by spinning up an instance on it. And at the moment, since we're running in a virtual machine, we can't use nested vert. And that means we're stuck with full emulation or QEMU. The instance is Cirrus, so that's actually minimal, rather small. And it's just so terribly slow, we can't really do anything with it. Uh, at the end of the test run, we connect to each virtual machine, I'll sync the log files off, uh, as well as state about each cloud, like, for example, what the orchestration system was doing, and what Nova thinks is running. Um, and so if the deploy cloud fails to come up, for instance, we'll stop and then we'll do everything else. And then we can release the lock on the test environment and then tell Gearman that we're done with it. And then Jenkins, the cycle begins again and we'll get reassigned. We don't usually bother about stopping the VMs inside that test environment because our scripts will do that for us. And we don't bother about clearing their state because they're about to get reinstalled by having new images just blooded over the top of them anyway. So if the job passed or failed, we'll come on Garrett and give feedback to the submitter about their review. Uh, AAA core reviewers, of which I am one, they'll look very carefully at the CI results to see that there's evidence the code is not going to break master. And as you can see in this particular check here, the Fedora 20 job has failed. So the Jenkins tests up the top are all about the code itself. That's things like Flake 8, like checking the code, checking the, running the unit tests, whereas the, the check triple O jobs, the three of them down there, are about putting the code into a full deployment and running up a full deployment and seeing what happens. So since we saw the Fedora job failed, now the submitter usually has to determine why. 
And since the patch I've been using for screenshots is my own patch, I get to determine why it failed. It's actually rather an odd failure. We didn't get any state from the host and the workload cloud failed to come up. So clearly we have a little bit more work to do with our CI system. And I think we've got plenty of time for questions. Cool. I shall run with the microphone. I think everyone's in stunned silence. I have a question. Uh huh. Yeah. How how big do you end up? How many machines do you end up having to dedicate to actually testing the whole thing? Is it the te like the test environments themselves? Um, so. You usually have to dedicate more than you think. The test, in, the test environments are, in fact, the bottleneck. We don't tend to run out of uh, compute in terms of, like, for example, running up the instances to where, where we build the images. Um, the, 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 the resource there that tends to be under, under, under the most contention are the test environments themselves. The VMs that are running are three gigabyte each. So that starts limiting you to about five test environments per like 96 gigabyte machine because we don't want much overcommit. Uh, so I think at the moment, I think we've got about 20 test environment hosts. And I think only about four or five actual like compute nodes in the, in the, uh, in the workload card. I think Nick had a question. It may be more of an ironic question than a, a triple O question. Uh, the bootloader support for the bare metal, um, bringing up bare metal machines, is mm -hmm. that currently x86 only, or have you got support for some of the other bootloaders for the different architectures? Feel free to take um, that one offline. <laughs> I don't know. We, we at least have some people within HP working on this stuff for ARM. And I know in the triple O stuff, we've been adding support for like U-boot. And like, for example, you need to run U-boot to point it at the kernel address offset and all that madness, which I thought I left when I left Canonical. Um, well, we, we, just rewrote B, uh, we just rewrote Beakers, and I was wanting to talk to some of the ironic folks about it. So, OK. But I think it works. I'm not sure. It'd be great to see it for power. <laughs> so we should totally talk about that. About that. Yes, yes, we should. <laughs> Maybe you could you know, lend some hardware. Ah, hardware. I've heard of this thing. <laughs> this thing that hurts when you drop it. <laughs> Hi, um, I had a question about the check-in process. Like you check in the code and then the Garrett will have the code review and then um, the code check into the master git, isn't it? Have multiple layer of git check in. Sorry? Can you show the, the first uh, graph? Which graph? The first one. Oh, that yep. one? The, the git report story, where after git, git um, Garrett code review. Oh, they got git report yeah, the and process? then they get. Yeah. What the process you use from the checking the code from the Garrett code review after the review and then? So there's, there's actually, I, I was trying not to go into this because this is also related to the OpenStack CI stuff. Yeah. Um, so our, our CI system runs for the check queue. There's also a separate queue called the gate where stuff that if it passes tests will land. And that gets marked in the Garrett review, and then it, that will merge oh, into, um, the, into the Git repository that's Garrett, that Garrett's got. And then that gets pushed up to both GitHub and git.openstack.org. So everything automatically or manually? Automatically. So the, from the Garrett code review, is automat to the Git repository, and it's pushed to the upstream, isn't it? So <laughs> once you push up code, we check it. And that will cause... Jenkins to either vote a minus one if the test failed or a plus one if the test passed. At this point, you're waiting for other humans to come and look at your code to check and to see if what you've stated in the commit message matches your intent. 
whether there's any bugs in your code, whether there's any issues in that code, and they'll vote with either a plus one or a plus two. So there are two cases, right? First of all, the fail case. First of all, you check in and the Gary uh, code merge back to the Git repository is fail at that state, and then do we run a Jenkins job or? So keep in mind that the the, the patches uploaded to Garrett aren't they're only on Garrett until they get until they get marked as merged in Garrett. The only place to get them from is Garrett until they're marked as merged, at which point they're in master and they're on GitHub and they're on git.openstack.org. So when the build process start? Sorry? When the build process start for in Jenkins, when the Jenkins job start? Start to build a, after a commit successful? The build is triggered by the review. Ah, oh, okay, right. Thanks. And 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 by any like, if you upload a new patch set, that will trigger a completely completely new check. Like, something has changed. We need to check everything again. Any more questions? <laughs>